Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Mark Nelson. I am a retinal specialist in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And we're gonna spend the next few minutes talking about photodynamic therapy. I've been using PDT for over 20 years. I've done over 25,000 laser uh, treatments and find this treatment extraordinarily valuable for multiple reasons that we'll go through over the next few minutes. The important question in today's world, especially with the plethora of injections that are given uh, for exudative maculopathies or a macular disease where there's leakage, which includes exudative macular degeneration, diabetic macular edema, and retinal vein occlusion is, why do we need PDT? And the important reason is, is that the PDT is the standard of care for several of these diseases as we'll go through them. More importantly, or at least just as is important, is the, the concept of treatment burden. We now know with all the number of injections that we do, that it's very important to find ways in which we could decrease the number of treatments that we're using on patients, both for the physician, the patient, and for insurance uh, purposes. But there's a couple of challenges that occur when you start using photodynamic therapy. And they're easy to overcome, but they are important to recognize. The first challenge is that you have to understand in order to do a good job, an excellent job, an accurate job with uh, diagnosing these patients, you have to use multimodality imaging, fluorescein, ICG, OCT, OCT angiography. And it's all about the vein. You have to be willing to put a intravenous access into the vein so that you can image um, the, the retina. It is not good enough just to look at an OCT. The OCT has important information, but it also has important limitations that the fluorescein and ICG uh, will overcome. In addition, by doing these modalities, you understand that there are multiple pathophysiological processes present in these diseases. It's just not about angiogenesis. It's just not about abnormal vessels just leaking. There are multiple different processes, some that are known that we'll talk about, and some that are that need to be identified in the future. And once you go ahead and find out what the pathophysiological process is, it's important to learn how to target the, the treatment. The PDT is about targeting specific treatment onto specific abnormal blood vessels, as opposed to intravitreal injections, which is an, a non-specific target. You inject it into the eye, and then it does its work. The other challenge is operationally, uh, is the operational component of your, of your office. How does it work in your office? Um, it's much easier to do an injection than it is to do a PDT. But again, as you'll see, PDT has uh, many, many advantages. But it, again, it's all about the vein. You have to be willing to put an intravenous access in in order to get the imaging done for the diagnostic aspects and then operationally to, do, to deliver the Visidine or Vertiporfin to the uh, back of the eye. When we talk about photodynamic therapy, we're talking about either monotherapy or combination therapy. Monotherapy, which means just using PDT alone, is used very often in acute central serous uh, corneal retinopathy in certain patients with exudative age-related macular degeneration and choroidal hemangioma. Combination therapy is a process that was popularized by Dr. Scott Cousins at Duke and myself uh, about 20 years ago, where we use a combination of anti-VEGF, half-fluence photodynamic therapy, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, uh, and steroid to treat exudative age-related macular degeneration polypoidal vasculopathy, and chronic central serous portal retinopathy. We'll talk about this very uh, repeatedly, and that is that PDT is the standard of care for polypoidal vasculopathy, acute central serous portal retinopathy, and choroidal hemangioma. We'll talk about how the lasers use full fluence or full power, or reduced fluence, and then whether we target or non-specifically uh, treat the abnormal blood vessels that we're talking about. 
So the classic indication for using photodynamic therapy is monotherapy. And monotherapy, half fluence, half power, is used as the standard of care for acute central serous retinopathy. Now, it's important to recognize the difference between acute and chronic central serous retinopathy. However, the most important component and diagnostic test is the fluorescein, which is shown here, where you have pinpoint leaks that, that emanate and, and finalize into the classic smoke si smokestack sign. When you see these focal leaks, that is by definition acute central serous no matter how long the, the presentation has, the clinical presentation has been um, present. Now, we know that acute central serous cori retinopathy has about a 70, 80 to 90% chance of resolving by itself. So very often we watch and we will do not treat. However, if it does, if it does not go away or if the visual disturbances are significant, we treat it with half fluence PDT and I, I can tell you in my experience, I've had 100% success rate. So the important characteristic of acute central serous, as you can see here, here's the fluorescein on two different patients. But most important is you see the choroidal hyperfluorescence, which is characteristic of acute central serous. You see that on the ICG. Now, this is very important to differentiate from this last patient who has chronic central serous. Even though there are several little spots of acute leakage, there's more of a this, more of a presentation of a well, that's similar to occult neovascularization, non-specific um, fluorescent leakage. And here you can see the ICG leakage, which is quite prominent. So this is really important. Again, PDT is classically used for acute central sears. And we'll talk about it more in a second when we talk about chronic central sears. One thing that I really like to use photodynamic therapy on is full fluence, and that's full. When we talk about fluence, we're talking about either by power, by time, or by dosage. It all depends on how you want to use it. They're all basically have been found to be about the same. But I like to use PDT on patients who have poor vision, less than 2400, especially in a patient like this one right here on the left, where they have a large submacular neovascular membrane and 2400 vision, but then develop a new hemorrhage superior to the macula. I just think it, there's really very little reason why you would not use injections on a patient like this because their visual acuity will never get better. And you're gonna to have to repeat the injections periodically. So in this case, I use full fluence to this area above where the uh, neovascularization is leaking. And then the patient is treated, their vision does not get better, doesn't get worse. But at least they don't have to have injections for many, many months. And very often it can last up to a year or more. Now, the process that was popularized by Dr. Scott Cousins and I was on patients who have, and who have, who have um, exudative age-related macro degeneration that does not respond to anti-VEGF injections. And this occurs in 10% of patients who have or are treated with anti-VEGF injections. 10% have what we call primary anti-VEGF failure. In other words, the injections really do not work at all. And then the second uh, categorization would be those who respond with monthly injections who start leaking if you try to um, decrease the frequency in a treat and extent or PRN type of protocol. And the reason, one of the major reasons why this occurs is because neovascularization, as it ages, becomes arterialized. There's, uh, you can see that on the ICG is a little harder to see, but now with the OCTA, you can clearly tell that this uh, over here on the fluorescent, you can see the type two, the classic neovascular membrane, and you can see the, the backbone, the arterialized backbone of this vessel. And I can tell you from experience that these patients either will not respond at all to anti-VEGF injections, or you'll need to do them monthly just to try to keep stable. These are the perfect patients that were first used as a rescue uh, protocol for patients who were not responding to anti-VEGF. And then subsequently we started using, um, I started using this process 
uh, as a primary treatment. In fact, there is a clinical trial that will be started very soon showing that on these type of patients, that combination therapy is superior to anti-VEGF monotherapy. Here's a quick example of what we do when we use this combination therapy. As you can see, this is an older patient where you can see a arterialized blood vessels on an ICG. This is before we had OCT angiography. And you can see how targeted it is. We just targeted the blood vessels that are actually leaking. You can see how this is just a small part of the whole, whole over, uh, oversized uh, neovascular membrane. And you can see that with one treatment that the leakage within a week resolved completely. So we talked about now standard of care. So that's, a, that's not been proven to be standard of care, but there are several instances that are standard of care. In other words, one of the reasons why PDT should be used is because it is the standard of care in several disease processes. One is polypoidal vasculopathy. The Everest one and two study, clinical studies showed that a combination of anti-VEGF and PDT was critical to uh, treating patients with polypoidal vasculopathy. And while this is not commonly found in Caucasians, we do see it in Caucasians. We see it in patients of uh, color um, in, in the United States. It's really not limited just to, uh, uh, to Asian um, uh, racial profiles. So polypoidal vasculopathy is really important to recognize. We already talked about acute central serous. We're not gonna to talk too much about choroidal hemangioma. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, pachychoroid in CMV, which is a paper I've just written about, which is really basically talking about chronic central, uh, chronic central um, serous. And then of course, this last one, the exudated ARMD is what I mentioned before about patients who have poor vision. Now, polypoidal vasculopathy is extraordinarily common. You can see a polyp on an OCT. You can see with these cone shaped right here I'm pointing out. These are polyps, but more importantly, you can see them on ICG. Fluorescein shows them to some degree, but ICG is classic for showing uh, polyps. And these are just dilatations of existing uh, choroidal neovascularization. But because they're very large, um, they tend to produce very prominent exudative presentations very often near the disc and they really are fairly resistant to anti-VEGF injections. The Everest studies clearly showed the efficacy of um, PDT and com combined with anti-VEGF um, to be superior. Now, one of the uh, papers that I've just uh, have just written um, is about the subject of chronic central serous. Many people thought that chronic central serous was just acute central serous that is actually uh, just extended past the three to six month deadline that we use for the acute designation. But in reality, most of these patients have a combination of choroidal hyperpermeability that you can see on ICG and then choroidal neovascularization you can see on the OCTA here and then down here. So a lot of these patients who have chronic central serous require a combination of anti-VEGF and PDT in order to uh, resolve their leakage. I have 87 patients now, I report 25, who were treated with anti-VEGF monotherapy, PDT monotherapy, micropulse micro, uh, monotherapy, uh, or um, mineral corticoid um, anti an an antagonism um, monotherapy, who did not have resolution. And then they had uh, the treatment of the combination therapy and the leakage resolved within a week. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that. In fact, this is a um, breakdown that I talk about in patients who have, we call pachychoroid. Pachychoroid is a thick choroid, which is usually associated with choroidal hyperpermeability. But more importantly, there's, there's different, between eight and in different age groups, there's different presentation. In other words, the younger, Patients typically have the acute central serous. Uh, people in the middle age have something called pachychoroid with neovascularization. Uh, and the older folks are what we call age-related macro degeneration, but they also have a combination of choroidal hyperpermeability and angiogenesis as well. Now, these are our patients that we um, treated <clears throat> with the modulite. Here you can see 
uh, on the OCT, uh, which shows the subretinal fluid, the choroidal neovascularization, the, the OCTA, which shows the prominent arterialized neovascularization, um, fluorescein, which doesn't really show that much, and ICG. But then you can see that after treatment, the leakage is completely resolved. This patient right now is about probably about 45 weeks after uh, the treatment coming on a year and has not required another treatment. Uh, in the past, my experience has been that patients on the average who get combination therapy will have resolution for about nine to 10 months on the average, but I've had patients go nine to 10 years without any intervening uh, treatment. Here's another patient with another choroidal neovascular membrane you can see really not all that impressive on fluorescein ICG. The OCTA shows the large membrane. Here you can see the pre and post treatment. Uh, visual acuity is 2040, is 2020 afterwards. And this patient's treatment has also lasted eight or nine months so far that it did not start to leak. And then this is a, a patient with a much larger neovascular membrane you can see on the, on the fluorescein. And then on the OCTA, you can see the massive size of the neovascularization. I can tell you that these patients who are treated with anti-VEGF will not respond or you'll need to do injections frequently. And with the combination therapy, you can see the leakage resolution is immediate. The visual acuity is not good because of the large submacular uh, quality, but at least in terms of this patient is not getting monthly injections without the hope of ever seeing better. So that's a, a quick overview on how I use uh, PDT. I think PDT is uh, critical uh, for certain disease processes because the doctors and the patient's expectations are not to have multiple injections and not get better. So it sets a better, uh, better framework for what for patients to expect. Uh, I've been doing PDT for 20 over 20 years. Uh, a few patients complain about it during the summer because it does restrict uh, their outdoor activities, but largely patient acceptance of PDT is quite uh, positive, um, mainly because it decreases the treatment burden. When they start talking to their friends and who are getting multiple injections, um, they're quite pleased uh, when they know that they're getting the same or slightly better visual acuity uh, with a much, much less um, burden in some uh, treatment um, strategy. Thank <laughs> you.